Hello, everybody, and welcome to Lee and Haley Overtime, the podcast brought to you by Shun Lee Chinese Restaurant. It's in Lexington, Kentucky. It is fantastic. If you'd like to make a reservation, call these folks, 859-309-0305. It's like, how does Z get in there? I don't know, but it's so good. <laughs> Z-Rock. What is the thing you love? It's the soup. The wonton soup. It's oh, a classic. you love it. But they have all the classic dishes, by the way. If you want to go enjoy yourself, it is fantastic. Some of the best. Chinese food around anywhere. Great lunch special. You can start off with egg rolls, spring rolls, all of that. And it goes right down to stuff from the sea. Like uh, <laughs> Kung Pao shrimp, shrimp with chili sauce, a Grand Monnier shrimp with walnuts. Oh, my gosh. That sound good? That or sounds amazing. even from the sky, chickens. They're not known for their flight. <laughs> but nonetheless, <laughs> sweet and sour Kung Pao the whole thing. What about stuff from the sea? What would you call it? Uh, swimming meat. That's right. Coined by the famous comedian Haley. No. Yeah. Uh, and do you yeah. know where you did that? I did that. I did it at a restaurant called Hux. In Columbus? In Columbus, Mississippi. Mississippi. We were there on a work excursion. And we were you, me, and our uh, photographer friend Devin. And, swimming uh, meat. And I said, oh, they've got swimming meat. No clue why I said that. Uh, no, referring that's to not any right. kind of fish. That's not right. I don't think that's what, what it's the wrong trip. Oh. Devin wasn't with us. This was. Devin was with us when I said it. So, swimming meat? Yes. No, I think that was the second trip when my buddies were down there with us. I thought you said swimming meat. Maybe not. Maybe you're right. Thank you. I kind of remember where we were. Well, it's hilarious. Refer to you anything were, from the sea as swimming me. I think or the you, lake, whatever. Uh, Freshwater you were on fish my too. left when you said it. <sighs> so you're just making this about you. You know. <laughs> Go ahead and get it out. Every week, about like, you. I should say something he hates about <laughs> me. Let's get it here off the top. Because every... Everything well, I, is well, about you well, I just all said, day long. Yes, it is, and thank and you. And if anybody wants to chime in with their own personal experience, you label them as selfish. Hey, Nikita. <laughs> I didn't say you were selfish. You want to say hello, Nikita? Oh, Nikita, let them hear your hello. melodious voice. Hello. Oh, my gosh, that was so really? good. What are you all fighting about? Uh, Lee's telling me Her the latest thing he hates about me. Every week, Lee. You Lee's smell great, I, by the way. What'd you do? Nothing. Oh. Look, she Howard. has... Yeah, she just showered. It's a new thing she's trying. Nikita is one of our producers, and she is so sweet, so gorgeous, so talented. Three things you will never be. <laughs> anyway. I do smell good. I walked here. See, that's all it takes. You were launching into me, cutting me to my core, and then Nikita pops in, and you're just... Bah, 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 bah. No, but I had like a 10-minute conversation about cologne and parfum. Where? At the bank. With... <laughs> Two bank tellers. Okay, you left for lunch. We Both all... of them gentlemen. Okay, so. I uh, deposited your check, which I have to do. It kills me to do it. But I did that. The, okay. And while I was there depositing. I won't write you checks anymore. I, uh, I wish you wouldn't. Well, anyway, <laughs> while we were um, doing the transaction, the guy goes, is that Savage? And I said, excuse me. Did you just call me a savage? <laughs> and I go, what? He says, that's Vaj. And I go, what? I still don't understand what he's saying. <laughs> I hate that. The third time you have to just pretend. And you know. I'm like, I don't understand you. He goes, Savage. Were you in the, the store? Cologne. Were you in the bank or were you in the drive-thru? You know I'm in the bank. Oh, wait, I guess you have to be. Yeah, I'm talking to it a video monitor. <laughs> if, if I've got that much on. You know, where, Especially those tellers that are, know, aren't in the location. Yeah, they're, they're in Florida. They're in Florida just through video cops. And they're like, my God, that's Is scent. that Savage? <laughs> okay, so you're there. He said, is that Savage? Yeah, we just <laughs> had a hurricane, and now you're doing this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, anyway, that's... Um, he said, is it Savage? And then we started discussing... And was I, it? No, it's YSL. Oh. And they said, was it YSL black, dark, blue, one, five, fifty seven? Savage is what Johnny Depp does commercials for. Sure he does. Who makes Savage? Is it like Dior? I don't know. Could be. Yeah, it could be, Lee. That's right. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, anyway, so... Anyway, we discussed that and how to get discounts. And he said there's something called Fragrance.com, or I don't know what it is. Okay. You get, you get it cheaper there. Oh. Anyway, we... I've heard of Fragrance. Me and these two dudes. So they... He was like, but you smell great? It's not Savage, it's so-and-so. Yeah, and, so. and they were young guys. 
I, I mean, love a man that cares how he smells. Tellers. Like I'm a sucker for a good smelling man. But just like women or any perfume, it, it, there's a fine line of when it's too much, not enough. Like I lo- But I love, men can just spritz a tiny bit. When I was a little girl, my mom called it boy dog when my dad would have his cologne on. My mom would always say, you got your boy dog on? I don't know why. Boy dog. And that just meant cologne. My dad always called it toilet water. How much toilet water are you wearing? Hmm. My mom called it boy dog. I don't know. Hmm. I need to ask her why she said that. I wonder if like her dad said that or her grandma or something. She would always say that. You got your boy dog on? And my dad would be like, yep. And she'd say it to my little brother, too. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Um, Okay, so you love the bank. How was that? I just told you all of it. (laughs) Well, but you did your transactions. Yes. I like the shirt you have on. Oh, God. (laughs) I like it. But. Because it reminds me of, like, the designs they used to do on the sides of Ford F-150s back Mm. in the day. You know? Right. It looked like. What are you doing? Well, what is that shirt? I like it. I've no, decided I like it. No, you don't. <laughs> well, no. I've just had to look at you today, and it's fine. It looks nice. But then when I really zoom in on the pattern, I'm like, what am I looking at? You look like someone practiced stick and poke tattoos on you. I don't and know. I love it's, it. I mean, that it's is like that digital camouflage look, I think. What are you blending in with? A computer screen? <laughs> I like to, as you always say, I'm a dazzling urbanite. You're trying to fit in with monitors everywhere. I got to lose weight. Oh, my gosh. You're right. Okay, but right before we started the podcast, I said, I said, Lee, you look great. Let's get started because we were kind of on a time crunch. And he goes, oh, I'm fat, his usual refrain, which he's not. And I said, no, you're not. You've lost weight because there was a couple months ago where you had Added to your out. waistline, and you'd mentioned it several times. Yeah. So we were all in agreement, yes. Because you like to make it a group effort when you need to lose weight. Not just me, but everyone on the team. I need to shame myself enough <laughs> to where people will You help need me. other people to confirm, yes, you need to lose weight. Yeah, you're a fat And ass. then once when other people say it, then you're then like... Then I get motivated. Well, I'll right. prove you wrong. So you did. You, you think lost, I'm fat? Okay. I was going to say, so you've lost weight. You absolutely I have. I had, and then I worked comedy in Louisville a couple of weeks ago. And I had nothing to do other than lay around the hotel room eating Wendy's and McDonald's, watching football. I like to envision you laying with your fiddling your own toes together on your side on the bed. I fiddle my own toes. <laughs> what is that? You don't ever do that? Like fiddle my own toes. For me, it's a toes. self-soothing thing. Like I'll just like rub my feet together under the sheets. Oh, just you, myself. Well, yeah, so I, I guess I've done that. I'm sure. envisioning you laying crossways on the bed, like your head on your arm just like kind of like resting and then your legs crossed and you're just rubbing your feet together to self-soothe while you eat wendy's self-soothe no i no, i that sounds up. like heaven to me like or going to a hotel and ordering room service or just bringing food and le- oh my gosh i love it i love it mm. so you went there because you had lost weight you'd been on you've been exercising a lot eating better yeah. you've lost weight but you're saying louisville derailed and you. i don't know what my weight is i don't use numbers <laughs> Do you use? I use vibes. I, I use my eyeballs. You do. I just you eyeball know. myself. Yeah. Go, yeah, oh, look at that tub of goo. I have given away more clothing this year than <laughs> give it to Nua because he can wear all that yeah. size 30 below yeah, that I used to wear. Size 30 below? Yeah. I wear a negative 30. <laughs> well, no, I. I you mean I'm size 30 to, and below? Because at one time I was almost a 34. Now I'm probably a 31. Okay. Waist size. I could do a 32. Okay. But yes, I was a, but anything that's a 30 or 28, I just give it to him. I don't, yeah. I can't get back to that. Because you went on, it, during COVID, an extreme weight loss scenario. Yes. You lost a lot and you got. Including a house. <laughs> and so much else. Um, yeah, so I was. I, I also had uh, severe depression and stress helping me lose that weight. Yes, and, and I was doing the essentially the keto. You were. I was just eating protein. And yes, I, and I was very disciplined about that for six months. And that even after I stopped, the weight stayed off of me for another I don't know eight months. And what made the change? Where you gained it back? Depression. <laughs> okay, never mind. I went from stress to depression, and then. Started drinking more. Mm. Boy, that's fun. 
Well, I don't think you're, no, I'm not saying you're not unique. Everybody's situation is unique, but I think it would make you feel better. I think those are the exact same reasons a lot of people up and down, up and down, up and down. Life's hard and we all are looking for comfort. And if you're toe fiddling it and doing it, it's time to tuck into a burger. I need to get somebody else to fiddle those toes. (laughs) I'm looking for a toe fiddler. Fiddler on the Indeed.com. Indeed. Go to Monster or Indeed. Toe fiddler. I don't think that's where those kind of people post. People that are interested in foot play oh. are not. I am not <laughs> interested in foot play. Honestly. You just want someone that you could touch with your toes if you wanted. I don't. I, if I'm You're not into sexually I, motivated no, foot play. No, thank you. <laughs> well, I'm not either. <laughs> sure you're not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, you're taking everything you've got not to jam your toes <laughs> in my mouth right now. I know how you are. No, I just don't, uh, I don't mind if we're touching your feet touch. Okay, okay. I like that. I yeah, just, yeah, it's yeah. connection. Yeah. Sure, we're all seeking that. Yeah. Pass me some of those Wendy's nuggets, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Use your toes to Underneath do it. the bank uh, desk, let's, me and the tellers. Still that male teller? <laughs> yeah. That smell, sweet smelling good man. Yeah. Okay, um, but anyway, so you... How, you were how long were you in Louisville? I feel like it was just a couple days. How did it derail you so? Well, I was breakfast, <laughs> lunch, dinner. Just I had a Wendy's that was right next door to the hotel. Oh, lovely. At halftime, Wendy's I'd is go, my favorite fast I'd food. I'd go get stuff. Wendy's is my absolute favorite fast food. And today okay. I've had a. And that's the other thing. You and I visited uh, Eckerd's Orchard. Yes, which is lovely. Well, they always stock me up with. Donuts. Yeah, stay tuned for an apple picking piece soon on the Lee and Haley show. Yeah, they every time we're there, they send us away with several packages of their delicious apple cider donuts. So good. They're so, so good. good. And I've had 10 of them. You have. Yes. And, and, but they I agree. Gave me Sometimes, a sack. like, if I'm trying to be really healthy and then I accidentally fall off the wagon, like, have a really bad day where I've just eaten a lot of sugar or drank too much or just eat crap all day, then it's like the next day you feel kind of, uh, so then you do it again. Right. Then you turn around and it's been a week. Yes, that's exactly. So that, it's not just the two days in Louisville you had. Well, it was I'm all the days you. after that you're yes. just like, well, I already had a couple of bad days. What's a yes. couple more? That's what I'm telling you. That is what is happening. You're stuck in that. I'm stuck in a rut. And then as because you were trying to climb out, the cider, cider donuts pulled you down. Today, there, well, there, there, I can't, I cannot resist temptation. <laughs> I just can't. And I don't know how many The times. devil is my biggest fan. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm his target audience. I just can't. So there's donuts there. I got to eat it. Yeah. Then, like today, I went home and I've had one donut. And I thought, well, that's, but I have apples. Let me eat an apple on my walk back. Yes. So I ate an apple. Hun- uh, and I thought, hun- Rosalie. Rosalie. Rosalie is one of the apple varieties they have right now for picking at Eckert's Orchard in Versailles, Kentucky. Delicious. So good. Okay. And I ate that. On and, the way back. But then I came by a Cajun place. <laughs> Bourbon and Toulouse, and I love And their, they tempted you by simply and like, existing? It. And I just, I'm like, don't do it. Don't do it. You had an apple. You're good. But I couldn't help myself. I go in there and sop all the rice <laughs> and the gravy and all the good things. What'd you get? What was the? I got the etouffee oh, and, and then the red beans and sausage. Oh, my God. So good. Mm. So good. It was, but I don't feel good now. It's yeah. not, I mean, I, because I, I've eaten too much. I've blown out my diet and my colon. Oh my gosh! Yeah. What will you have for dinner? Like, could you just? Have- I hope nothing. <laughs> but who knows what I may encounter? So I the, cannot trust myself. The plan is to go home. If you get hungry on the couch, you eat an apple. That's it. Yeah. Don't you look at that Uber Eats? Oh no! But I'll be there, and all of a sudden, I'll see this left hand come over. <laughs> It'll it'll start scrolling. No, and you're like, there. don't do it, left hand. Don't do it, left hand. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. I um, it's tough, guys. It's tough. Yeah, yeah. But you get tons of exercise in. I don't get tons of exercise. I make myself walk everywhere. <laughs> that's more than a lot of people. And you walk, but you but like that's not life changing. I mean, it it. It's educational, I suppose, because I see my city the way no one else does. I talk to quite a few characters mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. I walk around. Yeah. But I don't, no, I don't think it's making a big difference. It's not moving. Well, walking is about more muscles. than weight loss. Well, it gives me a chance. It's good for to, your heart. It's good for your mental health. I it's guess. good for cardiovascular, everything. It's great. 
I edit while I walk. I work because okay. I do all that on the yeah. phone, so yeah. I can do things. But absolutely, that you couldn't do while you were driving. But is it changing my gut? Not really. Well, do you? What can you do? What's one actionable step that you can take today? Because I've been there too, and you know, where it's hard to diet and exercise, whatever, to lose weight, or just even if you're not trying to lose weight, just take better care of yourself. Mm-hmm. But it's infinitely harder in my experience to feel like shit about yourself every day you know and so i've yeah, seen this on tiktok and it's things that's so true it's like choose your miserable mm, right, choose your right. hard but because you can either be miserable every day when you go to bed wishing damn it today i could have exercised i could have eaten well but i didn't instead i had taco bell twice and you know reese's cups and sure. and i laid on the couch the god's yeah, honest it truth sucks though. to not do it oh, okay and i agree with what you're saying it's way harder than just that you know but but the problem is i'm a master manipulator and i will tell myself yeah well just look at yourself from the sternum up you look pretty good yeah 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 let's find a way to hide the gut yeah let's not change the gut let's just hide it oh okay with a series of pulleys and trusses trusses and (laughs) and devices and scaffolding yeah and we'll just be fine that's what I do. I'll lie if to myself. If you're fine with yourself. I am not okay. fine with myself well, until the work has to take place. And here comes the work. But are you going to do the work? No. Okay, then. That's then... what I hate about myself. You know, I always thought, and you know, you went with, you went through this with me. I thought, I always thought this because I've struggled with this for a while. Yeah. Where I didn't look the way I wanted to look. Yeah. And I thought, you know, if I was one of those Hollywood stars and he had plenty of time and he had to do a love scene or take a shirt off. And so, you know, the producers concoct the whole you got to be naked on the TV show. I thought, well, that'll get me in shape. Yeah. Because good Lord, if if everyone has to see what you really look like underneath the clothes. Yeah. You'll work your butt off. Nope. I still didn't. Mm. still didn't and the date was getting closer and closer and i'd try to push it back and it was getting is this closer where you're about to announce you during a nude scene in a film that we don't know about no when, oh. when we did it for the show oh when you did the big nude show yeah and mm. i still and i thought well if i had That'll that me. if that was weighing on me yeah my goodness mm-hmm. i will work out mm-hmm. no i didn't no deadlines make <laughs> it harder for me deadlines make it harder it didn't for help me. me at all mm-hmm yeah, some people it works to have a goal like that. For me, it doesn't I have to do it day by day. Now, the care Hollywood myself. guys do have, they hire people to come yell at them and slap cookies out of their mouth. Mm-hmm. I never had that. Mm-hmm. You're looking to hire a man to come yell at you and slap cookies out of your mouth? Or a woman. Oh. Well, what's worked for me, because, you know, I've always been a pretty fit person. Um, about five years ago, though, I was going through it. Ex- I've talked a lot about how I have pretty severe anxiety and it's it's better now. I'm doing great. I've got plenty of coping mechanisms. I go to therapy. I'm on medication. Everything's good. I'm able to, fun, you know, function. I'm not that I was never, I'm a high functioning person, but I have anxiety. And because of that, I had gained, you know, some s- stress pounds from stress eating and laying around all the time and just so anxious I could barely function. So then about when the pandemic hit, I finally looked in the mirror one day and I was just didn't recognize myself. I was like 20, 25 pounds bigger than I'd ever been in my life. And I couldn't believe it. So fun. That's how, so I've lost it all. But the way I lost it was I just had to do one day at a time. Cause when I think about, you know what, I'm going to lose this, pa- this weight before my friend's wedding, or I'm going to lose this weight before Christmas or I'm going to, lo- it, it paralyzed me. So the only way I was able to do it, and thank God I did lose all that weight, because it was just weight that I had gained. If it was weight that I gained just because of natural living, but it wasn't. It was weight I had gained from anxiety and, you know, bits of depression and just stress eating and overeating and stuff was one day at a time. I was just like, I'm just going to do today, but I'm not going to like punish myself or be mean to myself. It was just And it's not going to take extra time. It's just I'm going to replace the bad things I was doing with something good for me, one thing at a time, Mm -hmm. and doing those small, actionable steps. And it really does make a difference. So for me, that's what works is one day at a time, one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. Long-term goal like that, it is – for some people, it's helpful. And people will be like, I just kept that in the back of my mind the whole time. And for me, no. If that's in the back of my mind, I get stressed out about it, thinking, oh, my God, what if I don't do it? And then it's that self-fulfilling prophecy of, well, I'll just go ahead and eat this entire sleeve of Oreos because then I don't have to worry about not doing it. Mm -hmm. Because now I know I've not done it. So now I'm in control. Right. So anyway. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then like I've had, you know, randomly when I have an anxiety, like intense flare up, I'll feel those old habits coming up again of because I'm a big stress eater of overeating, not exercising, and I can get out of it quicker now. <clears throat> Are you texting to Kate and saying, listen to this bag of shit Haley's throwing out here? I'm, I'm saying she said 25. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much more. <clears throat> it was 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, well, let's talk about something positive. What's something you like about yourself? Hmm. There's plenty to like. There is? Well, why don't you list it? You, your sternum, and north of it? Yes, north of it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Your sternum and south of it? Mm, not good. No. <laughs> yeah, gross. No. <clears throat> now, I'm good. I have told Takes you. you everywhere you've ever been. I'm good. Sternum up and uh, a little below the belly button down. I'm good. Okay. I'm fine with all of that. It's just the midsection. Yeah, one That's where everybody struggles. Spare tire. Mm-hmm. It's horrific. What are you doing right now? Texting. Who? Better be my, important. My agent. <laughs> Can you get me off of this horrible podcast? <laughs> and get me a man to yell at me and slap cookies yeah. out of my mouth. No, I, I was the staff. I was texting the staff to let them know. Haley's on her soapbox again. By the way, to, right now would be a good time for you to remind us. About what AARP is doing. <laughs> Okie dokie. Why don't you do that? Okay. All right. Because they are a new sponsor. Yes, they are, everybody. There's a lot on the line this election from protecting the Social Security you've earned to supporting family caregivers. And you have the power to make the elections count for you and make the candidates listen because voters 50 and over decide elections. That's why AARP Kentucky has created an election guide with the most up-to-date info about when, where, and how to vote. Make sure the candidates hear from you. Get trusted election information at aarp.org slash kyvotes. That's aarp.org forward slash kyvotes. Brought to you by AARP. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Yeah, if you're not registered to vote, um, this is not a political... Whatever. Whoever you're voting for, just get out there and vote. Make your voice heard. Participate in society. It makes you feel good. I love to get the sticker at the end. I vote every time I can. It's such a cool feeling. We don't talk politics on this podcast. We don't talk, we poli- don't talk, we don't talk politics in the office, more or less, or no. especially on the TV show. We don't do that. Because we want everybody, no matter who you're voting for, to enjoy the program. Yeah. You know what I always think? And we don't talk about religion or anything either, but, you know, Lee and I, you know, both have our own religious beliefs and I'm a Christian and I, um, this is what I think when I'm having a hard time with someone or let's say, cause I feel like politics are so polarizing now. This is something I've tried to do and it really does help me when I get annoyed at someone or a group of people or people that disagree with me or I think, I just look at them and I'll think in my head, all God's children, God created them just like he created me. He loves them just like he loves me. Although there is moments where he smited them. Yeah, but it just helps me them. feel less anger because I'll get angry at people a lot and I'll just feel like, ah, but then I just think, I don't know. It's kind of freeing. Try it. If you get mad at someone, just be like, look, all God's children. Well, I know, but sibling rivalry is tough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Well, we've got comments and questions from the audience from our staff members by the way if you'd like to participate on the podcast or in the podcast all you have to do is write to us ideas at lee and haley.com best halloween costume you've ever had nikita wants to know oh okay um when i was in high school past the point of being dressed up for trick-or-treating and only to go to parties however my friends and i, I think our junior or senior year we thought it'd be funny to dress up and go trick-or-treating my senior y'all my senior y'all <laughs> i didn't mean to say that. <laughs> my senior y'all with my friends um we decided we'd dress up and go trick-or-treating in her neighborhood because we like knew most of the families that live there so i got uh, a ref a fat referee's costume oh. and it was the black and white stripes with black pants but it was all one piece and then it had like a hula hoop ring attached mm-hmm in the middle Mm -hmm. so it was this huge ring in the middle and a black and white thing and then a little hat and a whistle and we i don't know why we didn't video it when i tell you 
we cried because mm-hmm. they would all watch me and I'd run down the street to the next house in this and I'd be blowing the whistle and acting like I was there. It was just me and like three or four of my girlfriends, but we were crying, laughing, running house to house. I think I'd worn it for like an event or something, maybe at our school, like a Halloween thing. And then we were just like, let's go trick or treating. I think so my- mine was a, f- mine was a, I think it was called like Fat Reverie. My best outfit <clears throat> should have won a prize. I think I was in third grade and. I jumped off the books and decided to do a tandem with my buddy, Brian Howard, who you met at that restaurant, Mm -hmm. the little country diner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Former fireman, that guy. And I said, Brian, you're going to be a horse. (laughs) And I'm going to be a cowboy. I'm going to ride you around school. Most of your stories are you bossing your friends around. Most of your stories are Somebody's got to be in charge. Really? Can't kids just collab? No. No, they need a, yeah. a strong You got to have a leader. Ruler. <laughs> anyway, so and we I think we made the head out of a plastic bag. No, no I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Brian, what's wrong with you? Can't you breathe? <laughs> oh no, a paper sack. A paper okay, sack. Yeah, and then I put a rug over him, you know, because he was on all fours. Sure. And I rode him. <laughs> And then we had... There was never a shot where you were the horse and he was going to ride no, you, was there? No, no, no. no, no. And I had, Not as the type I, A man I was at eight I'm years a, old. I'm a cowboy. Look at me <laughs> dominating this young man as I sit on top this of This horse him. will do anything, I say. Here in the third grade. Um, but I, I thought, well, we're adorable. <laughs> we're going to win this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I, so was this a school? Yeah, and okay. they brought in like celebrity judges, you know. <laughs> The, Who was it? The mayor and oh the librarian's mother, you know, oh, whatever yes. it, they're going to judge. Yeah. Well, our other buddy, Renee Sinners, who was much taller than any girl I've ever met <laughs> at that time. Okay. I mean, Renee probably at that, you know, if I'm 3'8", she's probably 5'7". Oh, so she seemed like. Right. Yeah. And she had some gown and they lined us up <laughs> and it took us a while because I'm riding them. <laughs> It took us a while, so we ended up at the end of the line, and 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 the judges are looking, you know, they're, they, and there's like say 12, 15 kids. Well, Renee's in front of us and extends her gown to show it off. You can't see us; we're blocked. And I kept saying, "Hey, put your dress down. We're going to lose this if the judges don't see how adorable yeah. we are." What are you doing, oh Renee? My God. Well, no one came down there. They, these lazy judges didn't walk it. You're telling me the librarian's mother didn't do her. To they didn't the walk judges. it, and we should have won that. Yeah, it's infuriated. What by was it. the prize? Something delicious, I bet. <laughs> I'm sure it was a treat, or you know, maybe you got to go somewhere. Yeah, I don't know, but so you didn't place it all. They never even saw you. No, they never saw. They it. because <laughs> I, I, you know. Tilting my cap up so I can make eye contact. And there no one's looking. But all I see is material in front of me where well, Renee has stretched her gown out to hide us like a curtain. Renee's your age? Yes. And she was that tall? Yes. And you were that little? Yes. And you were kneeling on doing the and, back of a young girl. And here's the, here's the thing. Renee, she was my buddy. And then Renee played Princess Leia because uh-huh. she was the only girl we had. She played Princess Leia in my home movies and I was Han Solo. And I would do the the scene where, you know, Han and Leia are arguing with each other on the ice planet. Sure. And I'm literally talking to her, <laughs> delivering these Harrison Ford lines, pointing where up at the are sky. these tapes? I got to find them. You've got to, Lee. I've heard enough. I've heard about these tapes for 10 years since you and I have been working together. Produce the tapes. I don't know where they are, but I'll find see if I them. Find them. They're either at your mom's house or your dad's they house. They may be deteriorating. I don't know. Some of them I thought I transferred to a DVD. Well, yeah, I mean, they are from the 30s, but we will get mm. them. They are from what, the 70s? No. <laughs> yeah. 70s? No, they're from the you 80s. You were 10 years old in the 70s. No, I was yes, not. You would were. you stop with this You turned 10 in 1979. At the very <laughs> end of it. Right before New Year's. At the very end. Finally, when was your senior yeah? <laughs> Okay, I've got to see the tapes. I bet you were adorable. Oh, oh. couldn't stand it. Prize worthy. Yeah. Now, where is Renee now? She still lives in my hometown, I think. Got She's got kids, married. I, occasionally I'll Renee? see her or run into her. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Um, What's the staff's group costume this year? <gasps> Since when do we do that? We don't, but we should. We've never done that, but we should. We need to do that for our Halloween episode. We all dress up. Okay. Why don't we dress up as the cast of Beetlejuice? All right. You're Miss Argentina. <gasps> I would love to dress you as Miss Argentina. Mm. Green body paint, little wig, mm. sash. Dude. And Who's what? Beetlejuice? Well, I don't know. Bridget obviously has to be. Winona Ryder? Yeah. Has to be. Nikita could be. Nikita could be. Are we doing the old film or the new film? I haven't seen them. Let's do the old. Okay. Nikita can be um, Gina Davis. Sure. You could be. She's going to be a brunette. You could be Alec Baldwin. Yep. I guess I'll be Beetlejuice. <laughs> you could. Nua can be the interior designer. I mean, wouldn't it make more sense if I was Beetlejuice? Interesting. Always wanting the attention. No. Okay, who else is going to portray Michael Keaton properly? You're right, because we want this to be proper. Yeah. Okay, fine. I'll be Miss Argentina. You can I would actually it. love to be Miss Argentina. Well, then you do it. Okay. I think that's it. I mean, for me, that's it. All right. Uh, what best Halloween movie or, you know, scary, spooky or Just whatever. read what they wrote. Don't I'm ad trying. lib. <laughs> Trying to what read. Halloween movie? Uh, yeah, you know, spooky, scary. <laughs> that's what, no, that's what it says. Uh, yeah, but just read it in parentheses. You don't have to go. Uh, uh, people can tell when you parentheses <laughs> freak me out. <laughs> Is this intended to be What's spoken? What's this little room there in? <laughs> uh, <sighs> it's a must watch for you every fall. I don't really get in the sky. Focus, focus. Yeah, you know what? Oh my God. I. Dawn of the Dead. No, let me tell focus. you, I've only seen one episode, but that Netflix show with Kristen Bell, nobody. You talked about this last week. That's not a Halloween show. Nobody wants this. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so good. What does that have to do with the question? I was just thinking of things I want to watch. <laughs> I can't wait to get back to my television. You haven't watched yet another episode? That uh -uh. was last week. You went on and on about how good the first episode I was. You still haven't watched the second? It touched me in such a way <laughs> that I had to get away from it. I'm serious. Because I sit there in tears strolling down my face. Oh, my God. Yes. Your toes fiddling a mile an hour. Oh, I, a mile well, an like hour. A, it was a buzzsaw down there. No, I was just, I could, I'm like, why am I so emotional over this? Yeah. And it wasn't anything sad. Like with Ted Lasso, I cried a lot. Yeah. With Ted Lasso. That's a, it's an but unexpectedly emotional show. there were some big show. moments that would yeah. pull it out of you. Yeah. And this wasn't that other than these two. They're just like, nobody... It's not going to work, but they're, it's going to, it's just too big. They can't fight it. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there. Oh God, it's killing me. And I got up and left. You got up and left. You're like, oh, this is my own house. Yeah. I got up and left my own house. Yeah. And had you started your menses or no? My what? <laughs> your period. I was kidding. What's a menses? Because that's what everyone always says when a woman's like, I was so emotional. I don't know why. And usually most of us are like, but uh, I've never and then heard I started the my period the next day. Menses. Your menses. Like menstruation? I think it's like some sort of version of menstruation or menstrual cycle. Oh, never heard that. Well, why would you? Do you talk about it a lot? I'm in an office full of women, including Nua and Noah. We would love to have them join us. Anyway, so people, it annoys me when people are like, were you on your period? Is that what you did? But most women were like, and then I started, and that's why I was acting insane. I love it. All right. What else? You good? I'm good. All right. Um, well, that is this week's episode of the Lee and Haley Overtime Podcast. We thank you for listening. Thanks to our sponsors, AARP and Shun Lee, the best Chinese restaurant in Lexington. Go visit them at the corner of Main and Woodland in downtown Lexington. We of, adore them. Yes. So you can join them for happy hour, too, by the way, because that lasts like pretty much all day from noon to what, six? Yeah. Something like that. And Tuesday through Sunday, get 50% off of your drinks mm -hmm. if you sit at the bar. Love it. Love it. Love you guys. God loves you. Hang in there. Have a great day. Great week. We're into October. It's a lovely time of year. A bit brisk. Throw on a sweater, maybe. Some cozy socks. Mm. And just, you know, tell yourself something you love about yourself. All right. Hang in there. Love you guys. Next week. Bye. <laughs>